We'll now explain how we can use predefined methods and classes in our programs. Since Java has its own set of predefined classes, there are just a ton of different predefined methods that are available to us. There's a lot of useful methods that we have. So this means that we need to be aware of at least some of these methods that we can use at our disposal. Before we can do that though, we need to understand a little bit more about packages. So these predefined classes that we talked about, they're organized as a collection of packages. So it's worth noting that each package has several classes associated with it. So we've seen some examples like that with the java.util package that has the scanner class as one example, but the java.util package has several other classes as well. Now, a given class has several methods that are associated with it. Using the scanner class as an example, we have next int, next double, next, next line, and so forth. And there are even additional methods beyond that. So if we want to use a particular class or a particular method, we need to know several things. We need to know the name of the package. We need to know the name of the class. And we need to know the name of the method. Once we know which method we're dealing with, we have to recognize what type of method it is. In fact, there are two different types of methods in a class. First, we have what are called static methods. Basically, these mean that we can call the method by using only the name of the class. So we've seen some examples of static methods. So one such example would be system.out.println. Uh, println is a static method, and the name of the class in this case would be system.out. The other type, well, since static is one type, then the other type would be non-static, original, I know. Non-static methods require an object to call the method. So to give you an example, next int would be an example of a non-static method. We need to create an object of the scanner class, and then we need to invoke this method on that object. So we'd have to have console.nextInt in order for this to work. We can't say something like scanner.nextInt. That just does not work. Java does not allow that. Let's take a look at the math class as an example. Now, we will be talking about several different methods that are part of this class later on. But for now, let's just take a look at how the package, the class, and the methods just relate to each other here. So the math class is part of the java.lang package. And as we've already talked about, we don't need to explicitly import this package. When we run a Java program, it's kind of given to us by default. But the math class is one such class that's part of this package. And every method in this class is static. And as we just talked about, that means that we only need to include the name of the class when we call a method. I don't have to create an object of the math class. I don't need to invoke any methods on any objects. I just need the name of the class and then the method that I want to call. So let's take a look at a couple examples. So we'll first look at the pow method, which computes the powers. So we would take some power, some number, and raise it to another power. So if Here's the syntax for it. So we can do math.pal, and if I pass x and y as uh, parameters, this computes x to the y power. So in my code, if I wanted to compute two to the third power, I can do math.pal, and then put two and three as uh, parameters in my parentheses. This would compute two power three, which should return eight. Another example would be the square root method. So here it would just be sqrt. So this computes the square root. So the syntax for that would be math.sqrt, and then if I put some x in there, that would give me the square root of x. So as an example, I could, if I wanted to get the square root of 9, I can do math.sqrt9, and that will compute 3. If we take a look at our math.pal example, x and y are what we call parameters. Well, what's a parameter? Well, think of it as a variable that receives some value when we call the method. So we call our method, and whenever it's doing its work off to the side, the x and y are these values that are kind of our input is the way we can think of it. And then many methods also compute a return value whenever we're done executing. So it does its work off to the side, it computes some result, and it sends that value back to whichever method actually called our method. So this 
type of the value is what we call the return type. So let's take a look at the POW method again as an example. So the POW method, it's going to send X and Y as parameters. It's going to do some computation and then it's going to send a value back and it computes a value of type double. So the return type is going to be a double. And this is used uh, to store the results for our method call. So we do some computation and we can take the return value, we can store it somewhere and we can do some stuff with it later on. And we're gonna see some more examples of this when we talk about methods in more detail. The last thing we'll talk about uh, for today is an observation that you should have noticed. So several method calls include a dot. So for example, I can do int x equals console dot next int. So this dot operator is what we call the member access operator. Although most people will call it the dot operator instead of the member access operator, but they mean the same thing. So what this operator does is it separates the class and the object name with the variable method name. So what do I mean by that? We can use this dot to separate the class or object on one side and then the variable or method on the other side. So most of our examples have been a class name dot method name or an object name dot method name, but we can also use variables with this as well. So what I'm saying here is whatever we put to the left of our dot is either going to be the class name or the object name. And whatever we have on the right of the dot is always going to be either a variable name or a method name. And we're going to be using this dot operator a lot when we're talking about classes, objects, methods. It's something that's not going to be going away anytime soon.